Welcome back to Sound 101. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones, and after seven years, this little guy needs to retire because, well, it's broken. So I made this one right here, and the only power tool I used was this drill. I'm gonna show you how it's made, so let's get started. So we've already purchased the Olympia XL cart on Amazon along with the casters. We don't need to go shop for those, but there's still a bunch of stuff on our list that we need to hit up Home Depot for. So let's do that right now. <sighs> Back at the Home Depot. Another day, another trip. Read the Home Depot shopping list to camera, no. If you're trying to follow this video along and you're having a hard time keeping up, don't worry, there's gonna be a link down in the description below to a blog post that'll give you a step-by-step -step for this whole tutorial so you can follow it at your own pace. This is the Olympia XL. What we're gonna do is get started, first and foremost, is the casters. One note about casters, they are expensive. Expensive. They're probably gonna be one of the more expensive parts about this whole build. Do some shopping around. What I did was I sourced it from a friend in the Olympia Facebook group. So go over there and try to hunt for a good deal. Other people are doing the same thing you're doing. Benefit from their research. Now to get these casters off, we have to actually remove this screw right here. These screws have to come out and this whole thing slides out. And to do that and replace them, you have to 3D print these guys. These holes line up with that hole right there so the thing will still pivot. This hole though is what we're modifying. That hole is much bigger, which allows us to put five inch casters on this thing, which glide a lot smoother. Hopefully they just last a lot longer than the stock ones. These should be much more premium overall. Big shout out to Michael Renner over on Printables for all of these files that we printed. If you don't have a 3D printer, by the way, you can use a service like Shapeways to have your 3D prints made for you. When you're removing your casters and you're trying to get that plastic insert out, be sure to look out for a metal pin holding in the plastic insert that attaches to the caster. Just slide in your tool, pop it out, and then wiggle it out using a set of pliers. When adding your caster to your plastic insert, I like to add a little bit of that red Loctite. It holds it in the place and make sure that caster doesn't go anywhere. Again, if you're not using the 3D printed part that we are, you can use the stock one itself, but you are gonna need some two-part epoxy to really bond the two plastic halves together and then let set dry for 24 hours so it cures. All the mods on this cart are pretty optional. You don't have to do them. The one highly recommended by the community is the caster mod. Replacing these casters goes a long way to give this cart a professional feel. When it comes to installing the axle, you'll notice that we're gonna have to drill out this hole with a half inch screw drill bit, and that's perfectly fine. But what you're gonna notice here though is when I move over to the hacksaw, I measure once and then cut. So of course, size it all out, do a quick fit, then do your cut and you're good to go. Don't try to cut beforehand. I always like to put everything together and that's what I'm using as my guide. Yes. <laughs> The reason why we're going with these really big tires in the first place is so that we can actually go outside on location. Uh, the caster only kind of cart is only gonna work on a studio floor. And even then we're talking, uh, you're not leaving that one studio. So again, we wanna be able to make this a location cart. I also wanna make sure this cart can collapse and still be level once everything's done. So if I'm using a five inch caster, I need to use a 16 inch tire so that my cart is still flat once it's all built out. One last thing to remember here with these screws, we're gonna use red Loctite, so it's permanent Loctite, but it's gonna take 24 hours for it to cure, so let it sit before you start moving the cart around. For the particular 3D printed boom pole cup that we're using, it actually requires three holes. This prevents the cup from spinning on us when we put our boom pole down on it. If you don't have a 3D printer though, you can of course use an end cap to a pipe. When it comes to the quick fist up by the handle, we need to clear that handle. So bring in a spacer about one centimeter or about a half inch off from the cart so that when the boom pole is fully extended, I can still clip it in and still have clearance of that top handle. 
Now I did do multiple boom pole holders and the reason for that is if I ever wanna put an antenna mask on the cart with some shark fins or omnidirectional kind of bow tie antennas, I can do that with that secondary mount. I've built this cart all in one fell swoop so that I can grow with it later on. Now let's talk about the accessory pouch holder on the opposite side. This is an idea I've had since 2016 that I've always wanted to do to my sound card. I never followed through with this and with this project, I wanted to make sure we did it. And I think we've really pulled it off on the way we did it with this Olympia XL. It really fits, ties in very well and does not prevent collapsing whatsoever. This is one of the easiest mods you can do. It's four holes, four screws, add it to your cart starting tomorrow. If you want a more premium style setup with this little pouch system, you go with a molly mount system that allows you to attach different pouches of different sizes any which way you want for your setup, but it does come at a premium price. One of the reasons why we're doing carpet lining in the first place is not because that the finish on this cart is really all that ugly, it's because it's all that loud. And because if I put a transmitter down in the middle of my chute on that hard plastic surface, that metal and plastic are going to resonate and create a real loud kind of banging sound. The carpet and rubber backing material absorb a lot of that kind of sound and really allow you to operate silently well on the cart and it kind of does give it that nice little finishing touch. And at $6 per level on this cart, it's one of the cheapest mods you can do. Two key tips here with the carpet though. We use liquid nails that actually work with rubber back material. I also used a spreading tool to make sure that liquid nail goes all the way to the corners and edges so the carpet doesn't peel up. And when I let it dry and cure overnight, I folded it in the half folded position so I didn't accidentally glue my cart together. I couldn't be more excited about the way this cart has turned out. It looks super clean and professional. And without any further ado, here is our DIY Olympia XL. Do you like this video? Well, I've got other DIY projects here on this channel, so when you subscribe, you can get more of those in the future. But I've also got some of my past videos linked right over here. One of them, I glued my hands together. It's pretty good.